Welcome to another edition of AFL Today. I'm your host, E-Money, hanging out here with Tony Cozzolino, breaking down week five and all the action. Tony, thanks for hanging out with us once again. Great to be back. Week five was interesting. Oh, absolutely. I know you had a uh, fun time in Chicago there. We'll get to that game, but i got to tell you right now, it's one of the big surprises I'm looking at. And I know I got some phone calls and some emails from folks just saying, hey, go hard on Mark, this is within two weeks, three weeks, but now we're sitting at 0-5. And also, I have to talk about those Chicago runs. These guys are really starting to play like champions. But Tony, give me your take on Mark and what's going on. Yeah, Greeson and his team got off to a really slow start in this game. Georgia was actually down 41-27 to at halftime and made a great comeback. Actually took control of the game, but the problem there, they left just too much time on the clock. Gave Columbus 47 seconds to tie the thing up. Not only did they go in and tie the thing up, they actually went for the win. Two-point conversion, very gutsy move there by uh, Coach K. But uh, Matt Nagy, he really wanted to win this game. I mean, it was against his old team who let him go, and uh, he succeeded. But a great, strong defensive effort by Columbus as well. Gerald Brown back there, two key interceptions. And, I mean, to do that against the team that has Jackson, Lee, Ferguson, he was out there knocking down passes, so was the rest of the Columbus secondary. I think a good team win, great offensive effort, great defensive effort, and I think they can really build from this. Oh, I agree, Tony. I'm still surprised uh, that they went for the two-point and the win at home. And again, you've got to get up to Nagy. They're playing hard in front of the home crowd and in front of his old team. But uh, let's move on to another great game. Uh, Arizona Rattler, 61, take a trip to the KC Brigade. And KC guns them down, 62-61 in overtime. And again, this is another case of Arizona playing well, but just one key interception or one mistake, and these guys are not closing out the games. They left it open. Again, this game was a blowout. But, uh, again, there's no such thing, I guess, as a, a safe lead in arena football because Casey clawed back, won in overtime, and, again, you've got to hand it to those guys for fighting in there and uh, staying with it. But TCOS with Arizona. They're playing well, but uh, what's going on over there? Yeah, Arizona, a two-touchdown lead at halftime. They actually got it to a three-touchdown lead right down there at the end of the third quarter and then just gave this thing away. I mean, five turnovers, four fumbles, lost all of them, and you just can't do that in this game. They, this is a game, and they also gave up an onside kick. Kansas City scored two uh, defensive touchdowns. That's just a recipe for disaster, and it caught up with them at the end, and they still actually had a chance to uh, win the game with a two-point conversion at the end of overtime, but uh, they didn't get it done, and, and that's uh, a really devastating loss for the Rattlers, who now got to go on the road against a, a rival in L.A., and then Kansas City's heading on the road against Las Vegas. I think they can really take this win and do something with it and, and look good next week against Las Vegas because their offense came through when they had to, and that was in the fourth quarter. Orlando's just not finishing their games, and I think that's going to pose a big problem for them because they're in a tough division. So this, uh, this is another detrimental loss for that team. New Orleans, they really needed the win. They don't want to lose two in a row at, uh, at home, and uh, I think they can, they can feel like they got away with one uh, with turning over the ball the way they did. Absolutely, T. Cos. I think another question is we're looking at this Florida quarterback switch. Obviously, Stafford went from Tampa Bay to Orlando. So far, things really aren't working out. Of course, the reunion... Uh, with Markham and company with uh, Calejo, and he's sitting the bench. So I think uh, things are in disarray in Florida, and these guys were kind of the cornerstone of the, the Arena Football League, and now 07 just really isn't doing these guys any favors. But still a little ways to go in the season, so we'll see. All right, let's move on. Austin Wranglers against Dallas Desperados, folks, and this is always a great match. Again, it goes back to what we were just talking about, the Florida War on I-4. We'll call this the War of Texas or whatever you want to call it, but these guys always do battle. And Dallas 68 overcomes the win at 60, the Wrangler 64. Now, if you would have looked at the stats, Tony, you would have set up another fabulous game for Dallas. You know, eight uh, Dozell, eight TDs, but in reality, they played so poorly in the first half. I thought the Wranglers were going to come up with another upset. But speaking of upsets, Adrian McPherson fumbles the ball away for the victory, and it looked like uh, a championship celebration for Dallas because they played so poorly to come back and win and keep their undefeated uh, record intact. Great game, to yeah, Dallas. And, but fumble after fumble. I mean, Austin really did hang with Dallas blow for blow, pound for pound. A lot of people didn't think Austin would be even capable offensively of doing that. So that's, that's a big step for them. But each team had four turnovers. And as I said, fumbles were a huge thing this week. And they were in this game just really sloppy. And Dallas is another team that really got away with one there. They were down two scores with a couple of minutes left. 
put up a touchdown and then recovered a key onside kick, and then uh, the rest was history there for Austin. But at the same time, I think it's a loss that Austin can really take something away from to go on the road in a tough environment like Dallas. And yeah, an 0 5 start now, and you've got a quarterback up back there with not much experience. So things do not look good. Of course, Tampa will come home next week to play New Orleans, but that's going to be a tough game for them. And I think the real difference in this game. Uh, wasn't you know you were going to expect Stony Case was probably going to make some mistakes back there, but they were only one of six on third down conversions, and that's what happens when you bring in a new quarterback. San Jose, on the other hand, you know this was a game that uh, they really needed to win. It was a vulnerable Tampa team, and they came back and avoided starting off one and three. So they're right back in the thick of things in the West Division, and uh, they've actually got to play Colorado next week, which will be another interesting matchup. But that's in San Jose, and uh, should be a good one. Oh, I agree, T. Cause, and that's going to be a great matchup, especially after Colorado's uh, last-minute win uh, this week, which you'll get to. Should be a great game versus San Jose. All right, moving on. Philadelphia Soul take a trip to New York, and I was expecting another blowout, another Tony Graziani clinic. Tony played well, but it was the defense this week for the Soul as the Dragons again did not quit. I got to hand it to those guys. The Soul ended up taking it though, 65 to 60. And again, the Dragons played a lot better than. Uh, that uh, first week debacle there. Rohan Davy did solid again. Uh, still had some I T trouble, but again, didn't quit. Started off shaky and it held in there. And the Dragons again did not quit. And it took Philadelphia four quarters of D to put this one away. Two guys. Yeah, and you have to think if New York didn't turn the ball over five times, they probably could have won this game. Uh, five turnovers, too much. But Davy looked. You know, he's progressing every week, and I think that's what they really needed to see. In Philadelphia. A game that they probably thought they could come in and be a little easier. Still maintained and pulled off the victory. But I think the big thing here, now Philadelphia next week has got to play Georgia on Monday night. And I think this will really show where Philadelphia stands because Georgia, of course, one of the better offenses. And we'll see where that Philly defense stands and see if that Philly offense can keep it going. That's going to be a showdown right there. No, definitely. And, of course, Tony, again, showing. I think we saw the two top quarterbacks show themselves human this week as Tony throws a pair of uh, interception as well as uh, Chris Greason and uh, again so not everyone can be perfect all week but yeah that's gonna be a great Monday night showdown alright moving on the LA Avengers we could sort of say they played the Chicago Rush but Chicago just put the we'll call it a WWF Smackdown on the Avengers event once again five turnovers for LA and you can't win doing things like that some of them, well, you could tell, was just one of those games. But Chicago Rush, Durazio and Scipio. The question for me, is Scipio that good or is just the Avengers uh, DBs that bad? And, of course, the Rush D played outstanding. But uh, for you Avengers fans, don't worry. It's not panic time. I think this was just too long of a road trip for L.A. This is their third game in a row on the road. I think they just lacked a little bit of energy. And as you saw in that game, the ball bounced pretty much Chicago's way every time. And so I would just burn the tapes on this one and I'd just say, hey, let's go back home. Let's get back on a, on a winning roll. On the other hand, of course, got a hand off to Chicago because they are playing like champions. And I think they have a chip on their shoulder. They, again, this is a team that won seven games last year, Tikaz. Didn't deserve to make the playoffs. Got a charity gift to get in. Ended up running the table and, of course, the champions. And now they're starting to play like a Tikaz. 